Okay, let's have a look, see if I can find it. Okay, that's not it. Let's try it again. Here it is. Ta-da! Okay, cool. That's up and running. It's a little bit weird. Why am I? Okay, it's... So I go here. That's right, I've got to go public first. Oh my gosh, I keep forgetting that stuff. Public. Saving changes. Let's check that it is public. It is public, good. Alright, so now I've got to pop out the chat. Pop out the chat, pop out the chat. Oh, a video output low. YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming. As such, viewers will experience buffering. Well, that's not great. Hopefully it'll improve. Okay, well, we'll pop out the chat anyway. Pop out chat. Good. And then copy that. And down there, out of the way. And then go over here. And then I'm going to just paste in that link. Do, 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 paste it in. Hit OK it. And then wait for it to update. Alright. Cool. I think that's working. And then try putting some stuff in there. Hopefully it's updating. Uh, we'll start. We'll second and I'm going to pull these ear plugs out because I can hear the sound that's coming through right. cool coolios I got it sorted and um, with any luck I'm hoping with any luck anyway it will uh, it will maintain. It won't be really bad connection. Um, I don't know why it's as bad as it's got to be. Lots of kids online playing games. Had to be that. Okay. Well, it's going to be a lot of buffering. I um, apologise for that, but um, I guess that's a product of living in New Zealand. Okay, so I'm going to get started, and uh, there probably won't necessarily be a lot of talking in this particular live stream, because I'll be doing a lot of making stuff. Well, that's the plan anyway. All right. Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Wheeler, and today I'm going to have a go at making a cheap D&D miniature, or Dungeons and Dragons miniature. Um, I, it's a workshop, so I'm... I, honestly, I haven't actually done this before. This would be my first beholder that I'm trying to make. I have a whole lot of resources and tools here. I have some beads, different size beads. I have some tin foil or aluminum foil or aluminium foil uh, for sort of building structure around the base of my monster. I have uh, some glue sticks. I have a glue gun. I have some Stanley pliers, long nose pliers for just twisting the wire. I bought myself one of these Citadel drill um, drills, basically for drilling holes into the the frame of my monster 
And I've also got my sort of jewel sculpting tools because I'm going to use some milli putt today. I've got some uh, heavy wire uh, paper clips and some lighter wire for bending stuff around and just shaping stuff. Um, a cutting tool, some bases, although I probably won't be mounting it on one of these bases. I think I'll probably try to find a smaller base. Um, and then I've got my milli putt. This is the two part. Uh, mixing um, putty that you put together that uh, that dries hard after about like a day and then I've got I know this looks a bit weird but I've got uh, these these cedar moth balls they're they're wooden and that's going to be the central structure of my my beholder because I'm going to use that to I'm gonna drill holes into it and feed the wire into it so I can build everything else around this particular piece of wood uh, I thought that would be like a good way of doing it now all of the materials are going to be in the description of this video uh, once it gets published and it should be up there right now anyway if i've missed anything then hopefully i you just remind me let me know and i'll add it in um, i'm going to just move a few things out oh also paper um the um i've got myself some toothpicks for making teeth because somebody had mentioned i should have a whole bunch of toothpicks so i actually got myself some toothpicks this time so i'm going to move some stuff out of the way so I've got a bit of space to work at and we'll get started. And our first task is to start bending wire because that's always where we start is bending wire. Move that out of the way, we won't need them for a little while. And we won't need the tin foil and we won't need that for a little bit longer. So I'll shift that out of the way as well. Bear with me while I shift things around. And I'll move the base. And we'll probably be keeping the wire. I won't need a cutting knife just yet. Uh, the glue gun we probably will be using very shortly, but not just yet either. Alright, okay. Alright, cool. So let's start off with opening up this packet and getting a wooden ball out. Oh, and um, I do have some instructions. I did a little bit of a drawing like I did before with Last Monsters. So this is my beholder. I'm not really going for a beholder with a lot of um, eyes or eye stalks. I'm just going to go with one central eye and about four eye stalks, maybe five eye stalks. And then I'm going to create like a base for it to sort of lift it up off the, the actual stand. Um, I was thinking of putting eyes on the bottom of those as well, but I may or may not do that. We'll see how we go. Okay. Let's get this thing open. Oh. Uh -oh. Don't go flying everywhere, I'll just find myself a decent one. And actually, one with a sort of a flat surface is not such a bad idea. It'll make it easier to actually put an eyeball on that. Um, now, I don't suspect that the body will wind up being that size. That's just what I'm going to build around. So if you're wondering, gosh, it's going to be a very small beholder. Um, it probably will be quite a small beholder, but it won't be quite as small as that. Paper clips as usual. I'll grab a couple of them, I think, this time just to start with. And let's unfold that. This might take a little while, so if I wind up just shooting this for, I don't know, about an hour and then stopping and then I'll come back to it some other day, then that's what I'll do. Um, Otherwise the videos get right horribly long and um, I should be doing other things. I'm still on holiday so I'm sort of just doing whatever. So I think what I'll do is I'm going to make a base. I'm going to bend this, I'm going to lift it up, I'm going to drill some holes and stick that in. So I guess how high do I want to lift it up? That's the question. Actually maybe, maybe just about there, just where the, the bend in the paper clip was. Let's go like so. Um, that's not going to be enough, is it? Because I also need a piece on the base to actually uh, feed it out a little bit. So we'll go. We'll go there. That's about the middle. And bend. And then it doesn't need to be horrifically long, but. Um, Guess roughly how long is that that's about from there to there 
a meter there. That means I can come out as far as that. Okay, so let's bend that over. Not quite the same length, which means I would have to mount it on a base which is at least large size because it's so far out. Well, I'll just rebend that. Sorry, I'm, as I said, I haven't made one of these before. I'm just trying to sort of work on what I've seen other people do and give it a go myself. Right, so let's, I think that's going to be enough of a base. It's about, about one and a half centimetres. One and a half centimetres would be what? Um, just over a half an inch, something like that. Um, or 15 millimeters, depending on what you use. All right. Okay. All right. So I feel like that is. It's not too bad. My little ball. Will I still be able to feed my little? Um, I can angle these though. I don't actually necessarily have to have them that far out. I can angle them in, so that's not such a big deal. So we can just twist them a little bit that way. And this way, and then I've just got to decide on how far, how high is the, the stand going to be, and how much I'm going to drill into the actual wood. That's the question, isn't it? So let's say roughly about there, I think that's about right, and so we'll trim off. And I, I don't know, I think maybe five mil. Half a centimetre, I'm not sure how much that is in inches. I mean, I'm, I'm guesstimating stuff, it's not, it's not like it's super precise. There we go. Okay, well that's not, uh, that's not terrible, and now I've just got to decide where I'm going to mark and drill. Uh, where's my drill? So I got this drill because um, it looked like it was more durable than the other three options in my game store. And um, you can buy it online. But what I liked about it was not so much the price, but the fact that everything looked like it was fairly solid. You know, uh, everything looked like it wasn't going to just break. And um, in a day and age where everything seems to break, I mean, that's just annoying, isn't it? Really, you don't want stuff that breaks, and I didn't want anything that was going to break. So I bought this one. It looked like the more durable and the better quality one, and I paid the extra price. And now my drills. So it comes with six drill bits, which is good. Um, I'm hoping I won't break too many in the process. Now I'm just going to match one up. That looks way too small. And that does too. And this one, this one is probably about the right size, that's way too big, so we won't worry about that one. Uh, let's feed that back in there. Doo -doo 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 -doo. How's everybody doing today? You, uh, you guys all still on holiday, or is it back to work, or... Alright, so... It be my first time using one of these drills. I mean, I've used drills before, but it's usually a power drill or um, drill press, stuff like that. I don't usually use little hand drills like this. Kind of reminds me of the old-fashioned um, drills that you used to get. Does it actually separate? Or is it just going to come completely off? This is weird. How do I get that in there? It needs to separate, and it's not. Oh, you're gonna be kidding me, right? It's not gonna be like that, is it? Let's have a look up here. Well, that looks like it's just for storing the, the drill bit in. So that's not much good to me. Unless that's a feed right all the way through. Is that a feed all the way through? I don't think that is a feed all the way through. I think that is just a, a storage location. Yeah, storage location. Which actually is pretty cool. I mean, the fact that it's got a little place where you can store the drill bits rather than in the little container, it's not a bad idea. But, you've got to be able to separate this and get this in here. 
and it doesn't separate. Okay. Well, that, that plan's starting to get look a little um, problematic. How do I get that to actually open up enough? Well, this is this is annoying. Sorry, sorry everybody. I didn't realise that I was going to have this sort of problem. I honestly thought that I'd I'd be fine. And that's not even the larger draw bit. I mean, how are you supposed to actually feed it in? I mean, there's a there's a little bit of give if I separate it like that with a knife. really feel like this is very safe. Oh. oh, there's two. That's what it is. Okay, so this is for holding the smaller one. Were there instructions with this thing to tell me this? No, there was not. All right, good to know. So when you're using this thing, you actually have to turn, pull it out, turn it round, and use the other end for holding the larger drill bits. <laughs> okay, well at least we've solved the problem. I was getting a little worried there, I was thinking, oh, I've just purchased something that, <laughs> that's useless to me. Okay, let's uh, start tightening that up. Oh, fiddly. At least once it's in, I don't have to do this again. Be using the same drill bit for all of them. Yeah. Okay, drill bit is in. It's all tight. I haven't managed to cut myself, and I haven't managed to damage my drill. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. Okay. So first of all, I really want that section there to be sort of where the eye is going to be. I think that is going to make much more sense. In fact, that way up is going to be just right. Now I just got to line up. Uh, where's my pencil? Sorry about that. If you can hear like chainsaws going, it's the holidays where I am and people just, you know, that's what they do is they get the chainsaw out and they do stuff on their property. Okay. So two holes roughly about there and there. This will be the first time I've ever had to dry it and drill into something that is spherical. I can't imagine it's going to be very easy, but we'll give it a go. Oh, that's working. Let's keep going. Well, how deep should I go? That's the question. I don't want to go too deep, deep right. The whole idea is, is, is just enough. How much have I gone on? Oh, let's go a little bit deeper than that. We've got plenty of wood to, to bury it into. And I'd actually like it to be strong enough that it doesn't move around, so. Apologise for the chainsaw next door. There we go. That's not too bad. That worked out pretty well. I'm just going to clean those holes out a little bit just to make sure I got all the, the sawdust out of them. Cool. All right. So does that fit in there nicely? Yes, it does. I'm going to glue these in place with hot glue um, and that's essentially my stand. I might need to bend that forward a little bit more so it doesn't sort of fall over all the time. He's really going for it. Oh, and bend that forward a bit more. Okay, in fact if I, if I lean it forward just enough, it's probably going to mean that I can, um, I can get away with a lot more weight, not being, you know, falling backwards, because that's, that's always going to be the problem, is the weight not necessarily being balanced out, right? Well that's fairly balanced, i just got to put the, um, the other stalks on. I'm going to stick four stalks on this thing, um, 
just because I can. <laughs> really, that that'd be the re that'd be the reason. Okay, so that's not too bad. That wasn't too hard. All right, so now I need to just mark out some more holes, positions for the other eye stalks. Like I said, I think four is probably enough. I don't want to do too many, and. I was thinking of uh, this would be more like a, a, a spectator. It's like the small beholder rather than the big beholder. Let's put, looks a bit soft there, so I'm gonna just put it in with this harder material. And another one, say about there. So it's not completely uniform. And then one around forward more. Yeah, there we go, there's three marks. And then um, another one that's slightly forward as well. Okay, so I've got four more holes I need to drill. I'm gonna just label these here so I don't forget that this is for the stand. So I'll put S beside them for stand. Otherwise I won't remember which hole is for what. Okay, let's drill some more holes. Stay still. I was a little worried about these hand drills, but it's not too bad. It's, it's worked pretty well. I feel I can go quite deep, so I, I think I will, just to make sure that they don't come out. There we go. That's one. Three more to go. If, I, if you can't see, I apologize, it's just, um, I guess the angle of where my finger needs to be. I'll just turn it around so you can see. Oh, that's not quite tight enough. It is spinning, so I'll tighten that up again. And where was the hole I was drilling? That's the stand, that's not the stand, that's the spear it is. Yeah, I guess that I've got to make sure I'm not trying to use my muscles and I'm just using the blade to cut into the, the wooden ball. There we go. It's not too bad. Excellent. I'll be curious to know just how long these blades start and last. I mean, these drill bits of, shouldn't be difficult to go and just pick up from the hardware store replacements too, which is uh, which is good rather than having to pay the exorbitant prices for small drill bits from a game store or online. Um, I've, I've purchased like um, one millimeter drill bits, very fine drill bit. Um, ten of them in a pack and it's cost like ten bucks like one buck each and that's New, New Zealand money not uh, American or um, Euros or anything like that so that's um, that's probably the cheapest way otherwise the single blade is like three bucks and uh, it's way too much okay all right so I've got sawdust everywhere now so that <laughs> but my, my drilling is done which is good and I'll put that back on the stand so it looks like it's something for now because now I've got to use uh, more of the um, paper clips to create the, the sort of the tendril bits with the eye, the eye stalk section. That one's just not quite deep enough. I think I'll drill that again. Okay, let's have a look, see if that's worked. Um, That's better. Cool. I'll, I'll glue it all together with a hot glue gun shortly, but not just yet. Okay, next. Let's go again. Uh, I like these paper clips because they've, they've lasted me for ages and they've got, it's heavy wire, um, but they are a little bit hard to, to work with. <laughs> it's just one of the hassles. 
Okay, so I've got to decide on how long I want it. How far out is this going to protrude? I can't get too silly, and it's got to have like a an eyeball at the end. So um, probably no more than the distance that it's standing, right? So let's go with. Otherwise, we're getting a little bit crazy. So if I cut it there. And then, of course, I've got to add in the distance it's going in. All right, so I think that is going to be long enough. I'll do one, test it, try it out, doesn't look right, then I'll do another one. Okay, so that section doesn't matter. I just need to bend this around a little bit, kink it up a bit. Okay, and then... Uh, maybe like a bit of a curve going, so it's a, sort of like it's looking forward. And we'll see if that works. Okay, well, I just need to set that in place. Where's one of my little um, beads? So I got these beads. They're not quite as small as I would have hoped, but... Um, I wasn't entirely sure exactly how I was going to go about doing this. So I'm using these beads. They might seem a little bit over large. I mean, you can you can get smaller beads if you want. Okay. And way out. And that can go onto there. And that'll be one of my my eyes the body of it is going to get bigger I'm gonna build it up a little bit so it'll change I feel like that might not be quite long enough I think maybe I do actually need to make the little piece sticking out a little bit longer so we'll do that cool. stop rolling around beads okay oh, too late they're gone they're on their way okay let's see much longer should I make it? Uh, let's go with... Let's go with there. That was a trial that did not work. And we'll try again. Let's kink it around. I can un sort of unkink it if I want to. I just want to get a bit of a curve going. Okay, and then let's have a look. Uh, where's that bead that I had before? So that's going to be fed in there. I feel like I should actually drill these out more, just so they're deeper, and then an eye stalk. Yeah, yeah it's not too bad. I think that's about right. I will drill those out just a fraction more. Sorry about that, guys. I wasn't expecting to sort of... You never know exactly what you're doing until you do it, right? That's the that's the, the hassle of anything that you make. And with an interlock, I won't hit any existing wire pieces that I feed into this. <laughs> that, could, that could be a problem. I was trying to figure out how to create like a, um, the structure, the, the main section for the um, beholder and I thought in the end actually like a, a wooden sensor is not such a bad idea just because you know you can feed lots of bits and pieces into it and yeah I feel like when I hot glue that in that'll be a lot easier to actually hold in place so cool all right I just need to make a whole bunch a whole bunch what four more three more about the same length so that's roughly Roughly about there. I 
should have measured it out with a, a ruler. I do have a ruler. No, it doesn't look like the same length, does it? Okay. Ditch that. New paper clip. One paper clip per uh, eye stalk, I guess. One, two, three. Sneakiest way, I guess, is just to start bending the wire and then match it up. <laughs> oh, come on, you. Stop twisting on me. There we go. That way. This way. This way. Yeah. There we go. Round, round, unround it, check it, uh, there, hmm. I mean they don't have to have the same shape to them, obviously, um, and they don't even have to be the same length, but I'm going to try to make them roughly about the same length, otherwise it's going to be a bit weirder. There we go. And straighten out the end, just a fraction, there's another one. Let's, I might have enough wire there to do another one, let's do that again. Uh, about there, feed it in. Uh, if I'm not far enough in the view, you guys let me know, okay? Sorry, it's I'm um, I'm trying to work um, slightly differently today with, uh, compared to in the past, where I sort of uh, had the the camera uh, in front of me, and now it's sort of off to the side, and that's just so that I have a, a bigger working space, and uh, and so therefore it might look a little odd because I seem to be off to the side rather than you know. Uh, the right way up. I can't have the right way up uh, without sort of making alterations to the video and it's a live stream so it doesn't work. You know, I can't have the camera hanging off my head. Uh, not at this stage anyway. Alright, let's have a look. Uh, what's that? That, that? that goes around, that goes around and it's about there. Let me clip off. There we go, and we'll re-twisty that, just so that we've got a little bit of a kink going in there, one another, okay, so there's three, we just need one more eye stalk, and then we can start gluing the structure together a bit. Come on. Okay. It's a little bit straight. Need to bend more of a curve into it. It's still a bit straight here at the end. I don't think it's going to matter too much though. No. I'm getting too fussy now. All right. Let's just tell, see how long this is. are going to be cut off about there. I would imagine probably the smartest way is to decide roughly how long you want your eye stalks to be, measure them all and then just uh, then bend them after but I haven't done that. That, <laughs> that, that would have been the sensible thing to do. Okay so 
I've got eye stalks, I've got that. Um, I've got a central bead, um, which is like a larger bead that I've, than the other ones, and I was going to use that as the central eye. So I'll just get the cell tape off. See, so slightly bigger. Um, maybe it's not going to be big enough, but I'm going to try using it anyway. And I was thinking I would try and cut it. Um, but I'm honestly not too sure if that's going to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to glue the little beads onto the eye stalks first and then feed them into here, hold them in place, and then we'll go from there. But uh, first task, I think, is so I've got something to hang on to, is to glue the stand in place. So we'll try to see if we can squeeze some hot glue into that hole. Come on. Okay. There's one. There's two. And feed it in. Feed it in. Come on. Go in the hole. Did it go in? I feel like it didn't go in. It started to set. Okay, got to be fast, don't ya? Okay, all right, it's on and that's setting and I think what I'll do is I'm not going to worry about cleaning the glue away because there's going to be more bulk going on to it so the the bits of glue that are there are probably not going to be an issue to, um, at this pre present time. I'll just make sure that that's good and secure and then leave it, let it dry, and then we'll start dealing with putting the little beads on the stalks. Oh, this is the problem now. Now, oh, I've got to remember, when you put hot glue onto something, the heat travels through, right? <laughs> and then you get burnt. So what I'll do is I'll hold it with them, put a little bit on there, and then put my bead on. They're all they're rolling all over the place. Okay. Actually, I can put probably more than that on. Okay, that's that. And then, come here, come here. And then slide it on. Come on, through the hole, through the hole. And I'm going to try to make sure that the, the bit of wire doesn't stick out through the other side. In fact, I'm going to bring it back just a fraction. Because that'll that'll mean I won't have to do too much with the um, the eyeball itse itse itself. You know, it'll it'll all be sort of done for me. Well, that's that's my theory. <laughs> and I feel like I should have been should have been able to put more glue in there. I might have to use like putty and sort of fill it in a little bit just to make sure that the um, the bead stays in place. But I can do that later. Push it into the hole. Okay, all right, we'll take that off, let it continue to set, and do the same thing again. Hold my stalk, get my glue. I think this time I'll make sure I put more glue on the length of the paper clip so that uh, there's more holding area. And then, let's find the hole, feed it through. Not too far, just enough, and then just wait for it to dry. I'd blow, but there's sawdust everywhere, and I'll wind up blowing all the sawdust all over my table. So I don't want to do that, so I'll just wait. Let it sort of set a little bit, and when it's sort of, eh, it's not too bad. It feels like it's mostly set now. I'll just leave that there. It's another one done. And stalk number three come here that definitely worked a lot better just making sure that you have a little bit more glue down the length of the paper clip okay a 
where's my wire? Now, not too far, just to back it up a bit. There we go, and just blow and wait. And that is the next one. And I need a bead for you. It doesn't roll away. Deal with you in a second. You can go in there. Cool. Alright. I think that's on. That's good. So grab the next one. And holding that right there. And then we're going to slip this little sucker onto there, like so. Let's get some glue. And you don't need to use hot glue, you could probably use other glues, but hot glue is kind of cheap, isn't it, really? And the whole point is that whatever you're doing is supposed to be easy and cheap. Well, I wouldn't say that. I didn't say easy in the video, did I? The description doesn't suggest easy, but it does suggest cheap. And this is cheap. <laughs> Cheaper than other versions that I can think of anyway. Oh, that glue gun. That glue's all over the drill. I should move the drill out of the way. Spire webs. Is it dry? Mostly. Okay, leave that there. Clean up my drill, which is now covered in hot glue. So that's... Uh, <laughs> that wasn't that didn't take long <laughs> all right so I take the drill bit out and looser and this is the feature that I think is really cool is the fact that I can now just take that drill bit when I want to use it again which I'll probably use quite often because I use paper clips all the time and now I can just stick it inside and then screw it up it's in there ready to go I'll just pull it out when I'm ready Awesome. Love it. Good news. Okay. All right. So we are, we're definitely getting further along. Let us glue the eye stalks into our little holes. That can't be too hard, right? <laughs> okay. So if I try to put it into the holes, that's not working that great. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to feed it along the wire and then push it into the hole. And now I've got something to hang on to that isn't metal, um, a little bit of plastic, so it'll hopefully protect my fingers as the heat travels through. <laughs> okay, let's give it a go. Oh, I need to get rid of these beads. They're just going to be all over the place. I'll knock them over and I'll want it with white beads everywhere. Uh, right over there. Okay, come here make this happen here cool done next where do I want it put it in there and you go and I'm gonna call it Okay, it's, it's still drying, um, I feel like I should definitely make sure I dry fit everything before I stick them in. That one is, I feel like that one's just going to be, is that going to be in the way if I stick that there on the side? Yeah, there's like way too much. Okay, so I'm going to unfold it a little bit so that it's less obtrusive in the front. I need to be able to get at the front at some point. Although I feel like I probably should actually not glue these all in right now. Maybe I should just work on the front section first. Um, I need to, I need to stick the main structures in. I mean, it's got to happen at some point. But maybe if I grab that big bead, cut that now, and, um, and then I mount that in the front, that'll give me less hassle to deal with. Now, I don't know how successful cutting this bead is going to be with a little knife like this. If I wind up cutting myself, you know that's not the right way. Alright, that's not going to cut. It's a tiny little knife. You know what I need is I need one of those decent Stanley knives. Actually, I have one. I do actually have one. Um, bear with me. I'm going to walk away from the table for like 
five seconds. Five seconds, well, maybe six or seven seconds, but so yeah, I got one of these um, heavy duty Stanley knives. It's just your basic Stanley knife, but it's got a heavier blade on it, so I'm hoping that'll cut through. Still sharp, good. Um, if it doesn't, I'll maybe just stick it on and just build up around it and not worry about it. No, it's not going to cut. What I could have done, if I was smart, is I could have got this and got some sandpaper, really cool sandpaper, and just worn away one side of it so that I only had half of it remaining. But I haven't, so I'm going to glue it into place and build up around it. And I'm going to have to build up quite a lot around it by the looks of it because it's going to stick out so far. No. Hmm. Oh, problems, problems, problems. I feel like I should be able to solve that, but um, I can't right now. Okay, all right, I'm going to do the eye stalks. Keep going with the eye stalks. I'll come back to the central light. I've got time to think about it then. Okay. As I said, this is the very first time I've ever tried to make a Beholder miniature. I've never done it before. Feed in the hole, push it in, move it round, blow on it. And we'll just wait for that to set a bit. So we're getting there, starting to have some structure to it. Sorry if it seems like it's taken a long time to get as far as this, because it has. Um, I might actually bend that further back and put more of a sharp kink in it. Oh, that's too sharp. <laughs> that's a way too sharp. Okay, let's have a look and see what we've got now. Yeah, that's a little bit better. I think that'll that'll be good. Okay. Let us try and get that on. Cool. And feed that in. Okay. Plenty of glue there. Make sure it's in the right place so it's not facing down and blow. And just let it set a little bit, and then we'll move on to the next one. So you don't have to have all of your eye stalks like facing forward like this, but I, I figure um, you want to behold it in attack mode, right? <laughs> it just looks a bit more interesting. Uh, but yeah, you can do anything you like with your eye stalks. And you could have less, you know, a, a spectator, the small beholder, only has four eye stalks, and you could have two eye stalks up here and two eye stalks down here if you wanted to have a different um, structure for it to sit on. I'm not going to worry about this being here, I'm just going to assume it's like a stalk, and like, you know, the dragon stalks that um, Wizards of the Coast uh, had the first release of their Icon of the Realms. Alright, so I'm going to un unferral that list a little bit just to so it's not quite so forward I feel like that's just not going to be enough um, let's just bend that a bit more trying to get a couple of different um, directions in it it's not such a bad idea too alright so now I can just bend it out Okay, and bend it up just a fraction. Okay, I think I got it. I think I got the shape I want. 
that's the sensible thing about doing a dry fit, right, is to make sure you actually have exactly what you want going on before you glue it into place. All right. I'm amazed. Everybody's, there's a couple of people watching. We've got five people watching and nobody's mentioned anything. I'm doing all the talking. Okay, I'm just going to let that set. Okay, so I've I've kind of come to the conclusion that although I would love to just stick um, a bead on here, um, and I would if I had half a bead, but I can't cut half this bead in half, not really. Um, so I'm going to make a central eye out of um, just clay, just the modeling putty, the, the, the milli putt. I'll create a central eye and then I'll flatten one side and then I'll stick it in place. I think that's going to be much more sensible. And uh, I'm probably going to, it's probably going to take like a, a day to dry. It's not going to be um, fast enough. What I want is something that'll dry fast. Green stuff dries faster. I do actually have some green stuff, so we might use that instead. Where is it? There it is. Okay, so this is green stuff. I don't normally use green stuff very often because it's really expensive and as a result, you know, it, it's a bit of a drag if all of your materials cost a lot of money. But uh, like I said, a bit of sandpaper and the bead the right side and uh, size and you just wear it down with your sandpaper till you get half a bead would be more sensible than using green stuff. But I'm, I'm in a rush. I don't have time to go running around looking for sandpaper. Hi Nobbingham. You're in awe of my crafting skills, Nobbingham. You reckon everybody else is as well. You know, I don't think that's the case. Do you know what I think it is? Is that people are a little bit shocked that there's actually somebody streaming um, how to make something and they're making it and they're... <laughs> that's probably what's going on. You know, I feel, can you imagine what DM Scotty and AJ Pickett and um, Black Magic and all those crafting guys, you know, on, on YouTube, how much time they must spend making something and it doesn't turn out. And then they've got to go back and reshoot, you know, it, they've got to make the thing first, get it right, then they'll shoot a video, more than likely, I would imagine, with it all completed and, and working out correctly. Who knows how many trials they've spent trying to figure all that out. With me, you're going to get all of it. <laughs> you get to see just how, how much trouble I, I, I have. Um, okay, so I need a little, just a small amount. It's only half a round. It's an eyeball. Let's not get too stupid about this. And I'm also wondering, I want to build it up, but I want to stick the eyeball on. I'm going to do that last. I'm going to grab our tin foil because I realized I want to actually build a body around it that isn't perfectly round. Right now it just looks like it's a perfectly round ball for its body. So I've got tin foil. Sorry about it, I'm jumping all over the place. I did have sort of a plan. Um, obviously it's not super fantastic obviously because, <laughs> because I keep changing my mind. But we will come back to the green stuff. I'm going to just build up and crinkle some of this stuff around here to just give it some slightly different shape so it does not perfectly round because otherwise right now it is exactly that the other thing is i'm not going to worry about building tin foil up around the wires because i feel the stalk's going to be quite small and by the time i put putty around the the wiring uh it's all going to get a lot thicker anyway so not necessarily to do that i'm just going to build up the body section with my tin foil while somebody next door is cutting down their tree oh Hey, I don't know if you could hear that, but I think something broke. Uh, Nobbingham. Uh, don't know any of those other guys, honestly, in here for this. Yeah, cool, I'm glad. That's, that's awesome. But, um, yeah, no, um, 
So AJ Pickett lives in New Zealand and he does monster lore uh, mostly, his videos. He's in my subscriber list and he also creates monsters. He, he does a lot of crafting as well. Um, and really cool. He's very good at it. He's certainly better than I am. I can tell you that right now. And then DM Scotty is the, the DM Craft. I think it's called the DM Craft. And he does terrain. He occasionally does uh, miniature creation. He does all sorts of different things. Um, he doesn't often do reviews or advice videos. He's mostly about crafting. He's got a pretty impressive looking Facebook group which he's um, almost I think kindly gifted to the the new uh, what is it um, uh, crafting guild that they've created so it's it's worth checking out if you, if you feel inclined and black magic does terrain um, and he's on my subscriber list too so yeah if you if you really want to see really good crafting projects you go see them because they do they do awesome stuff. Me, I'm um, I'm the sort of person who will just give something a go. <laughs> no matter how scary it might seem right now, that's exactly what I'm doing. Um, okay. Right. I feel like these aren't going to stay in place unless I glue my, my layers in place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that off, pop a bit of glue on there, and then try to stick the tinfoil on without burning myself. <laughs> yeah, he says that with um, confidence. Uh, a couple of bits of glue around here and then we'll see what happens you know, I can feel the heat coming straight through well done if you notice that uh, my finger is attached to the beholder that was completely intentional um, that that was actually supposed to happen it, there is supposed to be um, a human finger attached to this beholder uh, just to remind you that <laughs> not everybody is completely perfect. It's all right to have miniatures that are a little bit strange. <laughs> okay. Oh, I wish I had pulled out my, my little sculpting tools so I didn't burn myself so much. Okay. That's what I should do. I'm going to pull out. There's only one that I use out of this box half the time anyway. Just this, the single one. The one that's most useful to me. And it's essentially this this one here out of the tools because when this has got just a, a curved edge and it's a round round a round a section and this has got a pointy edge and it's like a knife but it's not sharp enough to cut and it does pretty much everything I want it to do so <laughs> so that's why I use it so much okay There we go, let's glue that in place. It doesn't have to be perfect because there's other stuff going over the top of this, so um, if, you, if you're worried about that, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it. We're putting um, Milliput over the top of all of this. He says as he tries to fiddle around with bits of tin foil. Uh, okay. Okay. All right. So there's my basic structure, and you can put more tin foil around here if you wanted to. You don't have to have as little as I've put on. But I'm feeling, I'm feeling like actually this is going to be better as a spectre than a full-blown um, beholder. Um, and if I was to make a full-blown beholder, I would just have longer eye stalks and build out with tin foil further. But we won't do that right now. So now what I want to do is I'm, um, I'm actually going to um, use the green stuff. I'm going to build the eye in the front. I'm going to see how it looks, and then I'm going to decide how I'm going to deal with the rest of it because. Um, it's a it's a little bit tricky trying to understand exactly what's going to happen. So once you start adding um, the putty, you don't know how much more putty you've got to add. But my understanding is that you can apply green stuff 
and Millipat on top of each other and it's perfectly fine. And I bought myself a cutting surface. It's like, oh, I need something that's self-healing. Where do I get a self-healing <laughs> pad? And I wound up getting this, uh, the Army Painter. Um, I was going to get the Citadel one, but it's tiny. I, I didn't, it's, it's like, I think it's even like half the size, maybe. Maybe a little bit, a little fractionally bigger than half the size of this mat. And I'll show you the size of this mat. This is not a big mat. It's actually pretty small. Okay. Little pile of... Alright, so I just need to squeeze this together until it goes green. Because that's why it's called green stuff. Blue and yellow makes green. So, Nottingham, what do you got here? Um, it's interesting to watch the process. Would have never thought of making miniatures myself. Yeah, well, the reason I'm doing the videos, Nottingham, is because um, I thought I was doing everybody a favor by making videos on where to buy cheap Dungeons and Dra official Dungeons and Dragons miniatures. And the, the videos were really popular. And to be fair, those videos uh, generate more income than any of the other videos. And the been more popular than any other thing I've ever done is you know where to buy cheap D&D miniatures the only problem is that because um, when somebody does a Google search or a search on YouTube those videos come up and so they go straight away they go buy the D&D board games and now the price is going up and they're not so cheap and they'll continue to increase in price because people keep keep buying them because you get like 40 42 miniatures and you're paying one price for the whole bunch. They're not painted, but it doesn't matter. So I thought, well, I could keep trying to make um, videos on where to buy cheap D&D miniatures, but it's only a matter of time before there's nothing that's ever cheap. So I thought, well, what's the solution? Showing people how to make their own. I don't honestly know how to make my own miniatures, so I'm just trying to figure it out and do it. And, uh, you know, if if I get a project that works out, great. And if I don't, you know, that's not the project to, to use. Um, how much would it cost in total? Well, I've, I've used, what, uh, maybe four, three or four paper clips, a little bit of green stuff, like a smidgen of it, hardly any. So that's maybe... 50 cents, 40 cents of green stuff. It's probably the most expensive part. The tin foil, I've hardly used anything. I mean, you could probably just get that from your kitchen and you'll be sweet. Because um, I didn't use a lot of tin foil. The mothball, I think I bought like a whole bunch of mothballs for like two bucks. And I've used one mothball and I've still got uh, 15 mothballs left to protect my clothing. So. I don't think it would cost you very much. The Millie Putt is probably going to wind up, we're going to use a lot more of this. Paper clips, I bought a whole container of paper clips for two bucks. I'm going to use maybe a couple of them. So it's like, I don't know, roughly maybe um, less than a dollar. I wouldn't imagine it would be more than that. I don't think you'd be paying very much at all. Okay, all right, so my eyeball. This stuff sets really fast, and it's nice and sticky, so I've got to make sure I get it in the right place the first time around. <laughs> and, uh, and that's going to hopefully be my eyeball. And as I said, you don't have to use green stuff for the eyeball. You know, if you can get a, a bead and a sand off one side, that's going to be cheaper to use, just a little plastic bead. And a lot of these resources that I'm using now, I'm going to reuse to make other stuff. So it's not like it's wasted. I bought a whole container or packet of something, and I'm, you know, just to make this one miniature, and I'm not going to use it again. Trust me, you're going to need eyeballs galore. Um, there's always something that requires an eyeball. Okay, so there's the basic structure of my beholder, which, truthfully, I think that's not too bad. This is going to set fairly hard. Um, I'm going to start mixing up some um, Millie putt and put a layer around it. Uh, probably going to do that fairly quickly. Um, 
uh, just just because you know we're starting to run into about an hour and that chainsaw he, he just wants to keep going <laughs> so I'll let him keep going so I'll just pull this out I'll mix up some of this uh, millie putt this is cheaper the millie putt is a lot cheaper and it's a two part mix um, putty as well um, so yeah that's why I would use it it's not as flexible which I suppose you could say is not means it's not as strong as the green stuff um, but it does it dries hard so you you know if there's something some flex in your your piece uh, there's a chance it might crack that happened to me with uh, the ocular swarm um, that I was making but that was because I was stupid stupid enough to try to pull the whole bulk of its body off uh, and I did not grab hold of the base and of course the the stalk that I'd created uh, got damaged and now I have to fix it and I'll, I'll do that at some point because I know I need to and then I'll get back to painting it yeah, there we go and is that roughly about the same? I think so Okay, right, so this stuff, it's, it's two part, um, it looks like it's essentially the same stuff, but it's not. Um, you've got to mix it in really good. I've got a lot more time to play with this stuff. I've got like a good, I don't know, a couple of hours before it starts to sort of get tacky and a little bit hard. Um, but it doesn't go completely hard for at least, you know, 24 hours. Um, I'd say really really hard maybe after two days and you're supposed to let it cure for like about a week um, and then it'll be properly hard so while I'm uh, squeezing this together and you're looking at um, the structure of this thing and wondering well it doesn't look like a beholder yet uh, what's the plan with the mouth and the teeth okay so the plan with the mouth and the teeth is I'm not going to cut it out and have um, a, a cavity what I'm going to do is I'm going to create like a, a snake out of my putty uh, once I've got the basic um, structure covered with putty I'm going to create like a snake form into like a round um, like a circle and then I'm going to attach it and then I'm going to use my paper clips and uh, not my paper clips my toothpicks my toothpicks cut them and then fit them uh, in, in between the lips of the beholder that I've created with that circle of or sausage of um, putty that's the plan and if I do that I think that'll look like it's got a decent sort of row of teeth without having to go into any sort of really complicated construction you know carving out mouths trying to fit the um, teeth it'll be really easy to stick a bunch of teeth onto a flat reasonably flattish surface where things aren't protruding too much it probably won't look as exciting um, but that's that's why I'm doing it that way just to make it simpler and easier to make and uh, I think that's probably really important is just being able to make something that anybody can do without too much trouble and it still look reasonable okay well this is mixing in all right and you can see look I paid 10 bucks for this and I've used that much putty I'm probably going to need to do a bit more than that but you're really you're not using an awful lot of putty um, to do this I've, I've used the, the millie putt uh, a couple of times to make miniatures and uh, most of the time it, it doesn't require an awful lot of putty because what you do is you flatten it out and you build a structure to, to attach it to so you're not using as much material as you could be using okay right let's um so normally what i do is i get this stuff and I, I form it into a ball and then i flatten it out and then i attach it and i think what i'll do is instead of doing balls i'm going to do sort of like a sausage and uh, then flatten it out and then layer it over the body around the eye and then um yeah that'll hopefully give us the the basic structure of the beholder and I'm going to start on the back because 
it's a lot easier to attach to the back than anywhere else. Trying to go around things is always the difficult bit. And I've got my sculpting tool so I can actually press things in if I need to. And as you can see, the, the milli putt actually attaches to the tin foil pretty easily. It doesn't sort of um, uh, fall away. It doesn't sort of, you know, create problems. And I can attach more of this stuff later when it's dried. Um, I had a talk to one of my friends about that process to make sure that I could do this uh, fairly easily and still attach um, putty later on, like when it's gone hard. And he said, it's not a problem, Fred. It attaches and it stays stuck. So that's good. And he would know a lot more since he's, uh, he's the more artistic individual that I know. Um, he would definitely know about that sort of stuff. And I'll just blend in the seam there. I don't have to be too perfect about this because I can attach more putty after. It's not like it's all need to be, it doesn't have to be perfect the first time around. I just need to get the basic structure. And I can, I can do this quite thin. You know, as long as it's not breaking through, I can actually do this quite thin and it's, it's fine. All right, let's see if I can kind of wrap it around and get it to the there so it meets up at the, the underneath. Yeah, that's, that's sort of had to break it in half a little bit, but that's all right. And then just stick it in. And a little putty knife to just attach it. Oh, not too bad. Oh, let's keep it closed. Don't put it too far away, Fred. <laughs> okay. All right, and again. Oh, sawdust. Should have, should have brought myself a little vacuum cleaner. And... Layer there. That's good. Okay. What I find awkward about using the Millie Putt is because it stays soft and tacky for so long, it's really hard to work with later on uh, when you want to start doing detail. Um, which is probably why I'm going to make sure I do a lot of these videos and sort of broken up into sections once things have been attached uh, just because I need to give it time to dry so that I can attach the next thing without creating hassles for myself because you know if it's still really soft it moves around a bit and that can be a, a, a bit of a problem okay let's attach that so all I'm trying to do today is get the basic structure on and this will probably wind up being part one of another part that we come back to and to finish it but we'll get the uh, the basic structure covered and coated today and then um, yeah come back and deal with the rest uh, should have brought that just a little bit close up but it's too late now let's just see if we can attach it and come back and use a little blob if I need to. And yep, it's too thin there. Great. It's just my little knife is not quite as give me it's quite a smoother surface. Just give me a second. I'm gonna see if I can clean it off a bit it's, some of the um, putty's dried onto here and it's um it's not as give me as clean a surface as i'd like i think i need, need to actually go and clean it off properly with some um some alcohol 
get all of the all the remnants off. Okay, let's try that. snakey bit and flatten it out. Okay, where's this going? I think around the eye, right there. And I can build up more putty around the eyeball to, to give it sort of eyelids if I want. So that's not going to be an issue if you're worried about that. You know, like what about this eyelids? And when you get super fancy, I suppose you could give it eyelashes. If you're starting to add things like eyeliner and so so forth, then I'd be concerned. Okay. Let's fill that spot. Okay, and just join that. And that's going to go over there just a little bit. Okay, cool. The tin foil is blowing around, the wind is starting to, to kick up. I've opened up all the windows, which is why you can hear the birds, the crickets, the Cicadas, I mean it's the cicadas, not the crickets, and um, although we do get uh, blacks, um, crickets here in New Zealand, um, rather than those green ones, and I'm pretty sure they hang around at this time of year, could be wrong. It just doesn't feel like it's using as much of the space as I need to. Okay. All right. Let's attach. I mean, to be fair, you wouldn't be building and making your own miniatures if, because if it's you're thinking in terms of time, it's probably very time consuming. If you like making stuff, it's not an issue. If you're in a country where you just can't buy miniatures, then you don't have a choice but to make your own miniatures or just not use them. So, you know, and you don't have to use them. That's 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 the key thing, right? You use your imagination. I might need to mix up a little bit more to finish the, the body of this thing.
is going on here? These little sculpting tools give me some trouble. Okay, all right, we're almost there. Very good. Now, um, I don't know that you necessarily get a, a particularly good surface, but you could probably also create um, the, your lips for your beholder with just tin foil, just rolling it into a, a, like a snake and then gluing it in place and then just covering the whole thing with hot glue to give it a surface that isn't like metal from the tin foil. You could probably do it that way as well. certainly be cheaper than using um, milliput and the hot glue sticks are very very cheap in comparison It's a nice fine day. The sun is out. I'm so glad I'm warm. I'm so tired of being cold. And um, a lot of the um, videos that I've done on making stuff that I haven't finished, I'll do them. I just, I've just been just picking up stuff and just doing whatever I felt like doing um, right now, rather than sort of finish it, finishing everything off, and making sure it's all tidy and complete. Um, but yeah, as a general rule, I, I do actually finish and complete the things that I'm doing. It just might not seem that's the case. And I'll, and once I've finished um, a miniature completely, I'll, I'll definitely do videos on, um, you know, the final product, what it looks like, you know, when it's all painted up. Oh, is it all mixed together? I think it's pretty close. Oh my, 
Okay, all right. I think that's done it. I certainly hope so. Okay, pull off a piece. Okay, so I need to actually fill in some of the smaller sections that are not complete. So like on top, there's a little section there. I don't know if you can see it. There's a little gap just around here. On oh, Nottingham, what's that? Uh, um, all of your recent videos have sunshine in them. It's great. Did you like the um, the walking track? I was walking all out around, um, what was it? Kai Iwi. If I, go, I hope I got it pronounced it correctly. Probably haven't. Uh, <laughs> and it's a, it's a very nice lake. And I thought I would try to walk the entire lake. Well, yeah, that was a silly idea. Um, I got about one third of the way round and realized that I couldn't make it. It was a three hour walk and my knees usually give out after about four hours. So that was just asking for trouble. Um, so I turned around and it was a blazing hot day. And then when I got back, I, I, they were like, oh, we thought you had disappeared completely. <laughs> I was like, okay. But uh, yeah, I couldn't, I had no energy, couldn't even have a swim. I just sat down, tried to find some shade drink lots of water <laughs> okay well that's not too bad I just need to fill in a couple more spots You hear the cicadas outside, they're going bananas. I feel like that's too, too much. Yeah, it does, it looks like too much. I just need to break that in half. Okay. Yeah, and then the other piece can go If it looks fiddly, it is. Okay, all right, there's a patch in the back, oh it's sticking to my fingers, stay. So I'm just trying to tidy things up now, just to clean up all the pieces that I missed. Well, there's a, um, also a guy who has a channel called Roll for Damage, who I've noticed he's been doing some monster sculpting videos as well. He's got a, a beholder, I think he's got a shambling mound, and what looked like sort of an undead centaur creature thingy, which I thought was quite cool. Um, okay, there's a patch in the back there as well. That's too big for that spot, so I need to break it. And finger there, like so, and then there, like so, and that's patched. Okay. 
and then blend it in. Who would have guessed that this is just paper clips and a wooden mothball in the center, but a tin foil. It doesn't have a mouth or teeth yet, but I feel like um, it's it's definitely going to come out looking like a beholder at some point. See, that's the that's the thing that I that makes sense to me is trying to make monsters that are that aren't humanoids. Making a humanoid and um, miniatures that are sort of like you know character miniatures is going to be really difficult unless you're really good at sculpting and shaping and so forth um, which is why I won't be doing those sorts of videos I'm not I'm not good at that sort of stuff but I feel like I can manage this what's that Nottingham um, question is will we see the see the making a cheap gelatinous cube uh, miniature video in 2008 okay Nottingham actually um, you probably will see a gelatinous cube in 2008 and you'll probably see a black pudding in 2008 so yeah uh, my biggest problem was trying to track down overhead projector sheets because I didn't want to buy them they're actually really expensive here in New Zealand and I didn't want to buy like a hundred of them. I don't need a hundred gelatinous cubes. I just need to make one. So um, there's a really good video that um, DM Scotty does on the DM craft. And I mean, he it wasn't his original idea. It was somebody else's, but he shows you how to do it. And it's really, really cool. But yes, I will. I will make a gelatinous cube and a black pudding. Um, I've already done the orchid jelly and we've we've got a grey ooze. We're unfor I, I do apologise. YouTube has absolutely ballsed up the um, the trim that I did with the, the grey ooze. At least that particular miniature is really simple to make. And if people really wanted me to do it, I could redo it. You know, because I could, I could do it in quite a short space of time. It's assembly and construction is so fast, you can probably make it happen in less than 20 minutes. Okay, so I've sealed that up, that looks good, and I just need to deal with the little side here that looks like uh, is a bit exposed. Yeah, Nottingham, I think that's the thing is, you know, if, you, if you're trying to make miniatures and you're trying to do humanoids, that's going to be so much harder. Um, I mean, you can make humanoids, but it would, I think you, what you would wind up with is just a basic structure and it wouldn't look quite as cool as the, the bought stuff. I mean, that's to be expected. Um, but if you're, you know, if you're happy to sort of, you know, something like um, a humanoid who is a, a shape changer, you just need the basic structure of a human with head, arms, legs, and you're done. You know, so that, I think anybody could probably manage that. It's when you're going to start making things like dwarves and elves and half orcs that you're going to wind up running into problems. Okay, and I just need to seal that over there. Now remember, even if you miss a, a, a space and there's tin foil exposed, you can go back over and refill it later. It's not an issue. You can do that. It will stick to your... And in fact, the putty will stick better to something that's already been created uh, once it's already you know, on, your, on your model. Once there's something for it to attach to, like itself, that's dry, yeah, life will be easier. Okay, so... There's, uh, there's the basic structure. I've got enough putty. I'm going to have a go at sort of covering some of the eye stalks. Now 
Now there's a reason why I didn't want to actually build up the eye stalks because I figured that the putty over the um, over the wire would actually do most of the work in terms of building up the mass for it. And also it means less putty. Yeah, less putty is less expense and less hassle. And as you can see that one uh, flattened out sausage has just about covered the entire thing. Just gently join it. Um, it's a little bit tricky but most of it is joining alright and if I can just join it here And if you're worried about it being strong, remember it's wire inside, and it's uh, it's a heavy gauge paper clip, so it's it's going to be reasonably strong. It won't be completely flexible, like some of the, the more rubbery miniatures that you buy, but I still feel like it'll be enough to um to do the job without it causing it too many hassles. Okay, and I I do need to sort of. Join the other side. It's going to be very, very tricky. I don't know if you can necessarily see what I'm doing. I'll try to make sure I can get you the best view. But I'm just trying to very lightly join the two pieces over so that they stick together. And that's almost one eye stalk done. So I'm going to just take a little bit and join it at the bottom. And I'm, I'm honestly not too sure that I'm going to worry too much about completing it at the end here because I feel like I should come back later on and build um, a bit more of a uh, an eyelid over the the bead so I could create like a you know a better looking miniature a bit more interesting and if I try to like I said if I try to do too much with the miniature while it's still soft uh, rather than giving it you know leaving it and doing it in stages it's just going to make a mess. So all I need to do is just join that up, cover that up, most of it. Good. And all of my details, you know, if you're worried, oh look, it doesn't have any details to it, it's all just sort of flat. Well, you, you can put as many details or as little details into it as you like. That's really up to you. And, you know, re remember even if your, your mold and your sculpting isn't very good, that's what paint is all about, is you use paint to create interest, you know, interesting features. Okay, all right. Well, I'm not going to worry about doing any more at the end of that one. I'm going to just go straight to the next stalk. Mm. The question is, do I have enough putty to get the whole lot done? Let's just roll that. I'll do it again. Stuff gets very, very sticky, and I'm in hot weather, so that doesn't help. Okay. Let's just remove that off. Pinch that. And this honestly is the hardest bit, is just trying to attach it the first time around. Because it sticks to your finger, you've got to be careful not to rip it. And of course it doesn't want to stick to anything initially, you've got to sort of coax it into place. Okay, all right, so now I just very slowly wind it round, blend it in, wind it round, blend it in, squeeze it on.
very lightly, very, very lightly. Okay, all right, well. That stalk is gonna give me trouble, I can see it now. are giving out. Come on. Join on. Okay, all right, it's so number two done. I'm just gonna clean my sculpting tool off because it's getting covered in cark. And that's not really helping in terms of putting the, the putty where I want it. So I'll just clean it off. For some reason the back of the tool is working better, which is weird because you'd want the sort of the, um, the concave rather than the convex shape for doing that that rounded shape right and when you're pressing onto something that's a sphere then you really want a convex the concave shape rather than the convex but it's it seems to be the one that's working the best <laughs> right, which bit is bigger that's the bigger bit And for those of you who are wondering, will this go up online? Well, of course it'll go up online. It just takes a little while for YouTube to process them. Um, or for me to get there and sort of tidy all the end screens and stuff like that. So yeah, if you want to come back and watch it, you can. There's more, more putty than I needed for that one. It's actually not too bad. That's good news. And I'll wrap it around a little bit more. Um, see, this is the problem with the wire and the putty is you've got to make sure there's... You've got to try to eliminate some of the air pockets that can develop between your putty and the, the wire. Um, so that's why I'm, I'm sort of gently squeezing it on to see if I can close all those gaps up. Otherwise when it hardens it might just move around or have a great huge pocket of air in there, which I don't want. Uh, is it Kylenbeck um, materials 
look, I'm using a, a wooden cedar moth ball, which is the center. I've drilled holes into it. I've used paper clips for uh, the stand and the eye stalks. Just basically just bent them and glued them into the holes. And then I've used uh, a couple of beads for the eyeballs and stuck them on with some hot glue. And then once I've done that, I've then um, covered the, the body with tin foil around the, the wooden cedar mothball. Uh, just to, you know, so it's not a perfect circle. So it looks like there is a little bit of variety in it. And I've used some green stuff in the center for the eye um, because I needed something to be there and I, I needed to sort of make it, I want it to dry faster and green stuff dries faster than the Millipup. Uh, I was going to use a bead and I would suggest just getting a bead and like I said, just sanding it down so you've got half and then just sticking it on. A plastic bead would be cheaper than using green stuff. And I'm using the Millipup for uh, the rest of the work in terms of the putty that's covering this and of course you will need a base of some kind to attach it to and I'm probably going to use a, a large base because uh, this miniature feels like it's now large size although I still think it would be really cool to make a extremely large beholder which is much larger than this but of course you'd have to create your own monster stat block for that because there's nothing in the monster manual for it so yeah those are materials and yeah I used a, a Citadel drill set to, to do that to put it down most of the materials and tools should be in the description if you're wanting to check on it so even if you missed this bit it doesn't matter it's in the description all that information there you go that's not too bad and uh, I feel like there might be an air pocket just there, but I can't seem to squeeze it out. This is this is the problem, you know, trying to use putty on wire, trying to get it initially on there the first time round is always the, it might wind up breaking off, it might just create a pocket of air and I'll never know about it. Okay, and uh, what else have we got here? Um, Perry, I, hopefully I've pronounced your name all right. A quick look at at the start, he shows everything he is using. Yep, should have read that before. <laughs> and it's in the description. I think the only thing I may have excluded from my description is the green stuff, because I wasn't planning to use it. I feel like that's definitely going to be long enough. Let's try not to tear it. Let's see if it's going to be long enough first. Yep, definitely. I just need to flatten it more. Ah, it's tearing. Don't, don't tear. And then I've got to blend it back in later. Don't tear. Okay, let's. Well, that worked really well. Let's try that again. Ah. Uh, like I said, this is definitely the fiddliest part is trying to get the putty onto a little paper clip. use that later on just in case I mess things up which I feel like I might have Come on. 
if you're wondering what's going on there, that's that air pocket thing I was talking about before. Just trying to squeeze it on to the actual wire. Trying to attach it to wire is always so difficult. Okay. All right, let's uh, just move that in. Smooth that down. And there's a little piece missing, which is why I broke off a bit on the end so I could patch that, because I knew that was probably going to happen. Well, I'm sticking to that story that it was intentional. <laughs> okay. I'll let go all the way around. Come on. I've seen people make um, beholders and all they did is just put the tin foil on, glued it in place and then just painted straight over that. They didn't use any putty whatsoever. I don't know how well that would turn out. Um, it's really up to you. Um, I'm going to use the putty because I just feel like it's... I'm, I'm aiming for making something that's going to be lasting a fair amount of time and... I feel like the tin foil might, uh, you know, tin foil is tin foil. It's still very light and it's easy, still easy to tear. And unless you sort of cover it in like something like glue, I feel like it's going to just tear away over time. But like I said, you could pro probably just coat the whole thing with hot glue rather than using putty if you wanted. Now there's a little bit just there that's just not covering. And I'll try to seal it up. Let's make sure there's no little ear pockets there. Um, where's my seam that I'm supposed to be cleaning up? One of the things I've noticed with this Millie putt is um, even if you if you leave it for a little while and it's still really soft, um, often you don't have to do very much about sealing up any sort of joins because it just sort of seals itself, which is like super awesome. And then other times you find that it sort of separates, but more often than not, it just seems to just join itself. So that reduces the amount of work that you've got to do, which is I think is awesome. If you haven't figured it out, I am a fairly lazy person when it comes to doing stuff. I'm not necessarily going to go and spend uh, a long time trying to figure things out when doing stuff. Right, there we go. Alright, so I think that is all I'm going to worry about for today. It obviously doesn't have a mouth yet or teeth. Um, and there's, there's some tidying up around the eyeballs here. And, and I, I need to put an eyelid on. I think probably just a sausage. Um... Uh, two sausages around that eyeball would sort of give it more of a, an eye look and then I can blend that in and it'll look more eye-like. Right now it just looks like a great huge round thing. And like I said, like a circle of um, sausage uh, of putty uh, to create like lips for the mouth, which I can blend into it as well. And then I just uh, insert my teeth, uh, which I can either hot glue in or I can use the putty and sort of, while it's soft, to just feed them in. But we'll come back, we'll do another video sometime. Um, I probably will, I would like to finish this fairly shortly. 
but uh, I, I suspect it's going to take at least another with the weather the way it is it's probably going to take at least two days before I can touch it and there's no guarantee that I'll be able to do a video every single day sometimes I'm, I'm not going to be around I'm going to Rotorua so going to Rotorua means like a whole day maybe two days actually it might stay overnight um, haven't been to Rotorua for a very long time but yeah I'm going to wrap it up for, for today we'll come back and we'll finish it off some other time um, so yeah if you found this video helpful or informative and you haven't already uh, subscribed then subscribe because um, I do more of this sort of stuff I, it's not it's not like it's a one-off and I do usually I do videos every single day um, but if you want notifications you can hit the bell button underneath the video and it will notify you occasionally if you don't mind that sort of stuff um, if you did like the video then you know hit the like button share the video with somebody else if you know somebody who might be interested in seeing what I've been doing and um, yeah hopefully that was really helpful to you guys or at least uh, slightly entertaining I know I was very quiet it's just I don't know when I'm doing these um, particular types of videos I, I do need to focus on what I'm doing uh, if you want to support the channel just watching my videos will help a lot but usually there's affiliate links in the description where you can buy stuff online if you do that sort of thing if you don't don't worry about it um, when you click on those links you don't actually have to buy the item that I've linked to uh, you can buy something else online uh, usually there are Amazon um, affiliate links and you don't get charged anymore I get a small commission for suggesting you go to their site and you pay exactly the same price and it really helps because it means I keep getting the I'm able to keep doing these videos it allows it's allowed me to buy my webcam that I'm using right now the new microphone um, tripod all that sort of stuff uh, and it just yeah it just helps just getting materials sometimes uh, you know I use a lot of materials uh, using doing these videos uh, it, it can be a bit costly at times but you know otherwise if you don't want to worry about doing that just keep watching the videos that's always good too and hey till next time keep rolling those 20s oh almost forgot almost forgot before I sign off look if you have any questions about the process put them in the comments if you weren't part of the live stream uh, otherwise yeah that's it I'll see you next time keep rolling those 20s